Deeds, not words, the women cried when the right to vote had been denied. Suffragist or suffragette? Those remarkable women we will not forget. They battled for equality in every way. Without them, would women be voting today? They believed that a woman should have the same rights. At work, at home and in political fights. So as we celebrate the centenary year, let's remember those women who showed no fear. Millicent Fawcett, at age 19, organised signatures for the first suffrage petition. Courage calls to courage everywhere, and its voice cannot be denied. I cannot say that I became a suffragist. I was always one. From the time I was old enough to think about the principles of representative government. The Women's Social and Political Union was founded in 1903 by Emmeline Pankhurst as she came to be. Emmeline fought hard, she was extremely brave. She said, I would rather be a rebel than a slave. She was repeatedly locked up in a prison cell, along with her daughters, Sylvia and Christabel. Three cheers for Mrs. Pankhurst, hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! They smashed windows and cut the lines to foams. The violent tactics were widely known. Hunger strikes began as part of the prison protest. Women refused to eat until their demands were met. Slashing the Rokeby Venus was just one of the crimes of suffragette Mary Richardson in her time. Hiding the meat cleaver close to her heart, she attacked and slashed the work of art. I have tried to destroy the picture of the most beautiful woman in mythological history as a protest against the government for destroying Mrs Pankhurst who is the most beautiful character in modern history. At the Epsom Derby on 4th of June 1913, the crowds gathered to see the King and Queen. But Emily Wilde and Davison had a very different plan, to promote the suffragette plight to that most important man. Holding a flag coloured violet, white and green, she runs onto the race course and the people begin to scream. Before she could attach the flag to the King's horse's reins, she is not to the ground, and her consciousness never regained. Did she mean to end her life in such a tragic way? Or was it an accident? Who can really say? Often seen as a martyr for the suffragette cause, her story defies opinions, contempt and applause. Lots changed for women during the First World War. They were called upon to do jobs they'd never done before. While the men were away fighting on the front line, women stepped up and proved more than capable in time. So as the working women proved themselves equal to men, surely they cannot be refused to vote again. On 6th February 1918, the Representation of People Act became law, meaning women over 30 with property could vote, something they had never been allowed to do before. It took another 10 years for the law to be fair. And in 1928, women over 21 could show how they care. By voting in elections and having their say on how their country is run, just like today. Women's fight to change the law has continued throughout time. The Ford Sewing Machinist Strike in 1968 stopped the Dagnan production line. Not only judged as less skilled, the women were not fairly paid. They were receiving 15% less money than the men leaving them feeling betrayed. So they stopped the assembly line that made the Ford car seat covers. And led by Rose Boland, Eileen Poulin, Vera Syme, Gwen Davis, Sheila Douglas and others. They took their case to the powers that be. Including Barbara Castle, the Secretary of State for Employment and Productivity. Described as playing a very significant part in the history of struggle for equal pay. The women forward strikers were the suffragettes of their day. Hey, boy.
is based on a true story right here in Dagenham where I live now. I understand why they went on strike because they were treated unfairly and that just wasn't right. I understand why the women were so angry and they were skilled and they could work hard but they still weren't treated the way they should have been. I think it's terrible that people are still not getting um, equal pay so when I'm older I'm going to get a job and I'm going to make sure I'll get it paid equally. I will be voting when I'm 18 because of the fact that I wouldn't want to put um, the trouble and the things that suffragists and suffragettes went through just to give us the chance to vote. I'm thankful for that so I don't want to waste it. Um, the suffragettes did not have the chance to vote and now we have the opportunity that we can vote so they can hear our voices. One thing I would like to change is the stereotypical views on each other. For example, if you give a little girl a fluffy toy, it isn't teaching them nothing. One thing that concerns me, me today is that girls can't play rugby in some schools and, boy, and boys can. So as the fight for real equality continues through time, we all have our part to play. I'm proud to be playing mine.